My name is Koi Mimi. I am 104 years old. I want to tell you something. I want to live on my parents' birth land. I am not a refugee. He can't. His village has been destroyed, and he's prevented from ever going back. Koi, now a respected village elder among the Po Karen, used to live in the mountains of what is now Ken Kirtan, Thailand's largest national park. When the Po Karen settled here many generations before the park's creation in 1981, it was just considered a forested area. Koi used to be a forest guide, working for Thailand's late Prince Panupan Yukon, grandson of King Rama V. Koi once found in the forest a white elephant, which was presented to His Majesty the King, Pumyapon Adunyadet. Despite this, Koi is seen by the authorities as an enemy of the forest, destroyer of natural resources, channel for inter-border drug trafficking, a migrant occupier of forest land. Because of this, he's become a refugee. I want to go back and live in my own place we want to live on our land. The people in the city should learn that living in the mountain is our way of life. In 2011, villagers were awoken at nearly dusk by park authorities and an armed Thai military attachment. Some of the soldiers ransacked the houses, ate the food and slept in villagers' rooms. The following mid-morning, villagers' belongings were pillaged. Animals were lured from pens and stoned to death or eaten. Rice barns and homes were torched. Some leaped from the windows as the grass roof had been set ablaze. Even the silver coins villagers received in the 1960s by the Thai government, proving their citizenship, went missing. There was little left beyond the clothes the villagers were wearing that day. The soldiers planted a Thai flag and told the villagers to leave the forest at once or be shot. The soldiers should not have just come and forced us to leave. If the official did not want us to stay there, they should have talked to us or negotiated with people to move down to the lowlands. There was no need to burn the houses. They may have been thinking that after burning everything, the villagers would not be able to come back. The soldiers said we couldn't leave there anymore because we had cut down the trees. They say the forest will be destroyed Drought will happen and the climate will change. They ordered us to move to the lowlands. We jungle people can't talk too much because the soldier will get angry and kill us. They are big people and we are very small. Where we were before, I lived happily. In the forest, we lived with our brothers and sisters. We lived close to each other. There wasn't much sickness. We were more healthy. During the time that our grandparents lived up there, the water in the stream never dried up. The forest had never been exploited. Trees grew large on our safe cultivated land. Down here in the lowlands, we faced difficulty. I lived in that village for a long time. We planted vegetables such as pumpkin, gourd and chili. We ate like this. We never destroyed the forest. My parents planted many trees that grew very big and tall. Many are now over 100 years old. Only when I grow upland rice do I cut the trees. When we do rice cultivation, we need to cut them, but only the small ones, the size of our arm or leg, which we use to build a house. The trees we slash are located on the old land which has recovered from our traditional farming techniques. This means we don't use the original forest. Everything on the earth grows back. We don't cut down the big trees. Our parents taught us like this. We find fish in the river and sometimes hunt wild pigs. We have never destroyed the forest. We do not understand why people say that we have. It took 20 years for indigenous peoples to have the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples adopted. This declaration enshrines the minimum standards for the survival, dignity and well-being of the indigenous peoples of the world. However, many states still do not respect the rights of indigenous peoples over their lands, territories and resources. Now more than ever, 
there is pressure to remove the inconvenient presence of indigenous peoples, in this case, in a national park. The authorities argue that the recent crackdown on the Pokeren came after several warnings for them to leave the forest of the Kangkachan National Park. They have been evicted from their highland homes many times, particularly since the 1990s. Many returned, however, largely because the land they were granted was poor, or they simply didn't have the desire to pursue lowland life. Regardless of the circumstances, Koei and his fellow community members remain located in a settlement area where they've essentially been left to fend for themselves. They're doing their best to adapt. However, this scenario has drastically changed their lives. This move has affected my mind and lifestyle. When people live down here, they have to work in the city. If one family has five children, each will likely work in a different place. When we have a festival or ceremony, it's difficult to gather. This makes us unhappy, especially for the family head who has to keep up the traditions. When we work in town, sometimes we are not paid properly. If we were where we belong, we would not have to find work. But here, we have difficult lives. We have no land, and we don't have time to practice our traditions. This has affected our communities, especially our house construction. There isn't much space here. We don't know how to adjust to a life outside of the one we lived in the mountain. There was space to live. We lived happily and with no conflict among us like we do now. We didn't have to buy food, we grew all the food we needed. Living here, you need to buy things from city people and you can only afford to live day by day. Our children have to go away to work and they cannot visit us. We are missing them. If you have relatives, they will take care of you when you are sick. But for those who have no relatives, life is quite difficult. As for me, I am alone. I have no brothers or sisters. I have my strength. Maybe because I did something wrong, my God might not want me to go back to my land. There is no peace. The forest means the origin of nature, the trees, animals, water, and humans. We believe in the forest guardians. If someone did something wrong to the forest or invades a sacred area, something bad will happen to him or her. Tradition means something that you hold in your heart. Yes, I want a better life, but I don't want to lose my culture. If this continues, I'm sure that within 30 years, our culture will disappear. I want the officers and any related agencies to do a study before doing something. Learn how we live and what we like. Don't just use the law or regulations, because people are coming from different places. To help people from the outside understand, I think we need to learn and study each other's customs. The Karen are accustomed to village life amid small clearings in the forest. Established in Thailand's mountains, they are the indigenous inhabitants living the way they know how, naturally. Despite this, and their stewardship of the forest, as well as the inherent right to their territory for their continuing survival and development as distinct peoples from the Thais, their future remains unclear. We are the original people who live up there in the mountains. I was born there, in the forest. Wildlife conservationist and Thai royal family member Dusit Sanidvong Na Ayutia confirmed that Koei and his son Noe are indigenous peoples to Keng Krachan Forest. His grandfather was the prince who Koei saved once. I recognized Koei immediately. I knew him since I was a boy. How could you do this to the Karen who have long protected the forests for us? People from the outside just don't understand our lifestyle. Do you understand about our culture on the hill in the deep jungle? 